Well, this is something you don't see every day. Two tropical systems within 600 miles of one another. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis back with you. We're going to talk about the evolution of the forecast that was from over the weekend. And then towards the end of the video, we're going to look a little long range into the tropics to see if this is the last little push of the hurricane season or if there's anything else out there in the long range post in the comments where you're tuning in from i love to know your thoughts on how this all evolved i have kind of a special message and it has to deal with what i said in the last video about not jumping the gun when you see those catastrophic model runs and i think that came back to bite a lot of people that i don't want to say scaring necessarily but we'll get into that in just one second First, we're going to marvel at this, and we are still watching this for Bermuda, but we have those two systems that are going to dance, and we can all give Umberto a round of applause because it got so strong and because Imelda was on the slower side, it's they're going to dance, they're, and Umberto is going to save the southeast corner of the United States from what would have been a ridiculous run from Imelda. Remember, you saw all those projections that what would have been if it didn't, if it didn't pull it away so there's the dance in action this is going to be wednesday morning you see the two swirls there one north of bermuda one south of bermuda and then they both kind of tug and pull on each other and then they both kind of hopefully split the difference for us in bermuda too and then work their way with this kind of merging system out as we get into the end of the work week so this is still you know this interaction going to be fascinating to watch over the next couple of days. Now, here's the latest on Amelda. We have both in close proximity to each other. This is Amelda closer to the Florida coast, leaving the Bahamas alone. You see its cloud deck extends all the way up to upstate New York, so that's wild. The trough that at least had the opportunity to steer it towards the Carolinas, it missed its ride up, but it is blowing all of its outflow kind of up toward uh, New England as that lifts to the north, and Imelda is going to make that sharp right turn to the right. So there we go now to the right with that forecast cone. This one could become a Category 2 hurricane. Now, Bermuda, we are square in the cone, so we're going to be watching this closely because we still could have some impacts as we move into the day on Wednesday and Thursday, and that's just from Imelda. Of course, the waves are already crazy big when when with uh, with respect to Umberto that's still down there just south of the island so I mean these guys are going to be guy and girl going to be dancing around each other for the next couple of days uh and again it's going to be something to watch so as of five o'clock tonight we'll get the new advisory still hanging on to a category four hurricane um it's teetering on that strain so we might end up seeing it downgraded by 11 none nevertheless still a major hurricane now this one going to go up and around Bermuda Staying a Cat 2 hurricane still through Wednesday and keeping hurricane status to at least Wednesday afternoon before coming extra tropical. So something wild to watch because just the evolution of how the rest of this is going to unfold is certainly something that's going to you know go down in the books for sure because this doesn't happen all that often, especially on the Atlantic side. This Fujiwara effect where those storms need to be, I believe it's 800 miles or, or closer, and you saw it there. We are under that 600-mile threshold for them to kind of tug and pull. And that interaction, no doubt, saved the United States. Okay, to date, we've had nine named storms. Three of those have become hurricanes. Three of those have become major hurricanes. So with how quiet this season has been, we still made history because this is the first time since 1935, it's 90 years, that a hur the first three hurricanes of the season all would go on to become major hurricanes. So that's pretty rare to happen. Again, hasn't happened in 90 years, and that's going to be something that uh, will go down in the history books regardless of how active or not active or inactive uh, this season will go on to be still obviously have about nine weeks of the season to go. We're still kind of in the back end of the peak of hurricane season. So you see that right there, that little orange box um, really going from the end of September through about the middle of October. That is where we have the rest of peak. And then the season kind of goes on through until November 30th. So some of the things that we are still watching now had a question to talk about what I think is going to happen for the rest of the season. So we keep on highlighting this. And I think the jury is still out if we're going to get a straight-up 
MJO pulse right on through from the Pacific into the Atlantic, what's been happening is they collapse a little bit and then we don't get that forcing. Now, this is the forecast through October 13th. And what we're looking at here, finally, the United States is on the right side of the map in Central America. We do have a big giant plume of green that would show us that we have rising motion anomalies, which when you get air to rise and you get storms to develop and given the current, given the atmosphere, then you can get tropical systems to develop. So that's something to watch uh, the second week of October. It's also still pretty juiced out in the main development region. And there are indications. Let me just take you out a little bit further. There we go through the third week of October. And then we get some of the light brown to slide through. So hopefully after the third week of October, this comes to an end. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show you, this is now going out to uh, the 8th, 9th. That's another system that the Google AI DeepMind model is pegging there. Some of the other ensembles are showing it as well. So there may be one more storm to come from the main development region, which would then give us 10. We'll see if that comes into fruition. The Google AI did all right. It wasn't the slam dunk that some people, I don't know why it's such a, it, it, there's so much shade thrown to the math and physics models. They didn't perform well, but not all of them had this going up to the Carolinas. Regardless, um, it did pretty well, and so again, we, we watch. And the reason why we talked about this last week, early last week, that we should rely on the AI models because they're basically an analog, a much faster analog than what humans can look up the weather charts from way back in the day. It's taking the conditions of now, and it's looking back and being like, hey, the conditions were similar then. Maybe this storm is going to do something like that. And that's why that is kind of helpful. So that's why the AI is going to be helpful. Again, I still trust the math and physics ones as well. It's just another tool in the toolbox. All right. So I touched on this on Friday. A lot of channels and a lot of other places were highlighting the extreme rainfall potential in the Carolinas. What Was there potential for it? Yes, there was. In my opinion, especially given with what happened with Helene last year, there is no way that those rainfall projections should have been tossed around like that was gospel. We talked about as well that on Friday, we still hadn't had meaningful Hurricane Hunter data, which, side note, Gonzo, the Gulf Stream, the G4 jet um, from NOAA, it flew a path from Lakeland, Florida, around Umberto, and then back around Amelda, and then back to Lakeland. After that mission, models were like, yeah, we think Umberto is going to grab this thing and pull it out. We talked about this. We need that Hurricane Hunter data. And until we start getting that data in, it's really hard to come to the conclusion because there's no data or very limited data out into the middle of the ocean. And that is why it was inappropriate for those giant rainfall uh, forecasts in the Carolinas, especially given what those poor people went through last year, almost a year to the date. Um, so that's my soapbox for the night. We talked about it was either going in or it was either going out. I didn't have the answer that it was going out on Friday. I'm going to admit that. We talked about that as a possibility and something that I learned way back in meteorology school is that you keep all the possibilities open at that stage of the game. You don't write anything off because, again, Amelda went slower, so it missed that trough. It missed that trough. Hold on. I think I have my – I have it right here. I have it right here. So this was – I showed you this last week. So there was – so it missed – um Admit that trough. So since Amelda was slower, that's the one that was 94L at the time. It missed that trough lifting. So therefore, there was nothing to pull it. And 93L, Umberto, got really strong. So they were. It's it's going to be grabbing it over the next couple of days and pulling it back. I just plead caution with everybody that it's better to be right than be first. And I think that did a lot of harm to the field over the weekend. 
the way out was always there. You can go back and look at the video that I pleaded with everybody that the way out was always on the table. To not let your guard down in the Carolinas, but the way out was certainly on the table. And uh, Turkey's on the table, and Umberto got it. And they're going to do the dance and get on out of here. All righty, guys. Thanks for letting me rant. I just want to put that out there because I think that was something huge over the weekend. Very, very huge. And I just want to give a shout out again to the Hurricane Hunters because without their missions in and around the storm, uh, we might not know still what's going on with the thing. That critical data, awesome stuff. Have a great night, everybody. We'll catch you soon.